Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. We come together on this very special day to celebrate and to give thanks. Uh, we are glad to be able to remember the sacrifice of others and to know that we're all working for the values that are shared in our remembrance day and in our remembrances. Uh, the uh, announcements are before you, and uh, please keep in mind uh, on Thursday at 7 o'clock is the official board here and a number of other announcements. Uh, you will know that now that we're, we're getting soon to be past Remembrance Day, we'll be thinking about Christmas, so we have lots of activities coming up for that, and keep that in mind, there are some announcements about that in there for you. And also uh, in our priority session, uh, at the end of September, we did talk about the common cause we can work together on within the pastoral charge, and so if you've got ideas about that, you have until uh, the beginning of December uh, for uh, to be able to offer those to talk about what will be good for our church. So a number of announcements there for you. Please keep them in mind. Anyone else have any other announcements that you'd like to make today? Yes, it was really good. Everybody worked well together and we had two sold out uh, suppers, so that was a really good cause before us in the church. We light this candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. We live in a world where there is much darkness, and we do need the light of Jesus to guide us, to guide the whole world. And let us join together in number 806. O oh God, our help in past eight zero six.
come to this place knowing that God is with us, just as God is with all of those who have passed, for those who gave the supreme sacrifice, we remember them in this time and know that God is with them and with us in our hopes for the future. Let us join together in the opening prayer. It is printed in your bulletin. And we pray together, loving God, you sent us your Son to bring your peace to the world. Help us to work for peace in our homes, our school, our city, and our world. Protect all soldiers who are at war and bring them home safely to their families. Grant peace and consolation to the families of <coughs> soldiers who are grieving the loss of a loved one due to wars. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we will stand for the last post. There will be a minute of silence and then the reveille. And uh, then Marty will uh, lead in the uh, lament with the pipes. Thank <laughs>
fields. Helen is going to give a little history about that. And then Helen is going to read Flanders Fields in Flanders Fields. And uh, then immediately following that, we'll be having the anthem, which is uh, an echo of the Flanders Fields as well. Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, soldier, doctor, author, teacher, artist, born in Guelph on November the 30th, 1872. His home still is there. Uh, when it was about to be torn down by Edith, the neighbors in the community got together and mortgaged their houses so that they could buy that property, restore it, and leave it back to the city of Guelph. It is now a Canadian heritage site. John McRae joined the militia at age 16, perhaps because his father was the leader, and it was easier for him to do that. He seemed to have a natural leadership ability, and soon uh, rose in the ranks as a, as a young officer. He graduated from Rock Collegiate and earned a scholarship to the University of Toronto, where he went and received his undergraduate degree, and then went on into medical school and became a doctor. He and his brother Tom, who was also a doctor, studied under Sir William Osler at Baltimore Hospital eventually. Because he was a bachelor, he had a lot more freedom with his time, and so he was able to move around the country in several communities to serve as doctor and start up a practice here and there. He was so good at his business of pathology that he was uh, asked to lecture at the University of Toronto to other would-be doctors as they came along. At the outbreak of the World War in South Africa, he felt called to go because, uh, he, because of his military background. And he and a group of enlistees from Guelph went to, to uh, South Africa to serve in that war as doctors, as also as um, artillerymen. And his uh, feeling after the, that war was that the care of the wounded and the horses was truly appalling. And his notion that war was a glorious and wonderful thing, where you could fight for your country and win freedom for all, changed when he saw how things really were when he got into war. And he stayed away from that when, he, when the war was over, working at his medical practice and traveling a bit and doing some um, artistic work. At the end of the war, uh, he was perfectly contented to go about his business. And then, of course, in August of 1914, the call to arms came once again as Britain declared war on Germany. And he really felt he didn't want to go, but in good conscience could not stay at home. And so he joined up with 620,000 other enlistees to fight in, in Europe uh, against the Germans at that time. Uh, during the war, he fought in the trenches and was subject to the chlorine gas that was unleashed upon the, the soldiers at that point and suffered some damage to his lungs, a, a critical condition that stayed with him for the rest of his life. He became chief medical officer for the Canadian forces in uh, Europe at that time and developed pneumonia in this uh, operation uh, where there was a a tented city of injured people from Passchendaele and Vimy Ridge and the other battles that went on at the time. And he succumbed to that at age 45. It was during one of those times in, that he was sitting on the back of, his, of an ambulance. And he looked out on a, on a field full of crosses that soldiers would come out at night and bury the men who had died the night before because it was a time when fighting wasn't going on. And one of his very close friends in the artillery was one who had died. And as he sat there, he drafted the poem in Flanders Fields. It was picked up by Punch, a, a magazine in Britain, and printed there, and has become the supreme uh, poem that, that people use at Remembrance Time because it seemed to capture the attention of everyone. And so we'll listen to the words. In Flanders, he feels the poppies blow between the crosses rolling round. 
that mark her place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly. Scares her, her amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high in fee great faith with us to die. We shall not sleep, the poppies grow in Flanders field.
and so we remember them. And if you would like to take part in this activity, uh, you can come forward right after the benediction today, and you can put one of the names on one of the poppies so that uh, they are remembered in this time as people who served in the wars and for our country. And we remember also all those others that suffered so much because of what happened here, the grief that was experienced by the families because they had lost their children, their brothers, their fathers in the war. And uh, let's join together in prayer. We can all repeat that after. O oh, gracious God, I thank you for the poppies that grow that remind me there is life after death.
security and blessing that God would place upon them. A number of years ago, the Manning Center did some research about Canadian values and what was important. And out of that uh, research uh, came a couple of interesting uh, conclusions and uh, I guess a bit of irony. And first of all, it was found that there was an increasing worry about, about security and anxiety that we would feel secure, that that was a very important value for us. But also, it was noted that during this time, crime was down. And it is uh, because we're an aging population in Canada. And so as we age, there is less crime. It's because older people don't commit so many crimes, you know, it's the young guys and all that. But also, because we're older, we feel very threatened and very insecure because we're less able to kind of control things out there. And so in that irony, we are people who, yes, have less of a threat around us and yet feel increasingly insecure. And that became the uh, foundation of the last government's law and order agenda. Um, and, and that still exists there for us, that sense of worry about the future that we have. That we really do care for security and for all of these issues that are so important to us. Today we remember the sacrifice that was made by many so that we could live a more secure life. There is a sacrifice of soldiers in various wars. Of course, at Remembrance Day, we often are remembering the First and Second War, the Korean War, but more recently, the people have, who have served in Bosnia and in Afghanistan, and some in Iraq. And so, there is that remembrance of them. And people from the 60s, like me and my generation, like many of you are, never are quite sure how to take Remembrance Day. Because after all, we are the people who uh, really believed in peace and sometimes worried that uh, money was being spent on the military that could have maybe been better spent on some other areas of care for people. And uh, I guess a worry of anxiety uh, that really the wars and the conflicts don't seem to accomplish that much in our world, that there will always be war. However, we do have the sacrifice that has been made by so many. And it is important to us in this time, as we become a greater global village, knowing what is happening around the world. It has uh, been a reminder for us and for so many people that bit of a change that I've seen within our society. And you remember the people, of the soldiers who had died who were brought back from Afghanistan. And so they were brought to Trenton and the uh, hearse brought them to Toronto for their autopsy. And the people would stand on the bridges on that route, the highway of heroes. Because we did want to give thanks to those people and knew that they were doing the best they could to try to make this a better world for us. Yes, we may want to devalue war in some ways and maybe make some changes, but we also have to take our part within the world. That we try to um, help out in whatever way we can that the world will be a better place. We remember the sacrifice of the soldiers. But we remember the sacrifice also of the families at home who have suffered and who are doing what they can themselves within the war effort. That this will be something that will help to change our world. And so we all are a part of trying to make this to be a better world. That this is the value that we hold up for all of us. Major Neil Parker has written a poem that appears on the uh, Today's uh, Remembrance Sunday Bulletin uh, that is put out by the United Church. And it begins, 
a flag on my shoulder, marking to whom I belong. Patriotic, engaged, soldier, citizen, humanitarian, peacekeeper, security force. This is what I offer to Caesar, my life, risk for others' safety. A flag on my shoulder that this is the care for the whole nation and for the world. This is done for Caesar. And without this kind of concern and rod to make this a world a better place, we have no safety. We do need to be able to respond to threats that there are within our world. My heart on my sleeve, marking to whom I belong. My children, my lover, my mother and father, my neighbors. The children whose leaders leave them at risk. The victims of neglect or evil. Women afraid of rape. Man afraid of torture. This is what I offer. To stand against the forces that deny life even if it costs my own life. My heart is on my sleeve. I do this for my family. We do want to make this to be a place where next generations are safe. We do this for our children and for our children's children. We stand against the forces that threaten our homes and our families. A sign on my brow. Marking to whom I belong. A child of God, forgiven, called, loved, Muslim or Christian, deep faith or no faith at all. This is what I offer to God, my life poured out for those on either side of me. A sign on my brow, a declaration that we work together for God. We have our high values and our beliefs that drive us to try to make this a better world, that we will all live a better life. It is, as Psalm 127 says, that it is God who gives us our security and our hope. Let us bow in prayer. Oh gracious God, we thank you for being with us throughout all generations. We thank you for the work and for the sacrifice that has been done that we might have a better world. That is the hope. That is the value. That is what we hold up. That, that we will have security in our homes and our families. Amen. Let's join together in uh, Take My Life. It's uh, number 506 in the handbook 506. Thank you.
bless these gifts, that they will be used well in furthering your work within this world, that through these gifts your love and your peace may be known by all. Amen.
Jesus, who taught us to pray together as we do now in song. Thank you. 